Hi, my name is Sue White and I teach finance at the University of Maryland. I'm here today to talk about ethics. In particular, I'm going to talk about the CFA Institute Code of Ethics and Standards. I very, very strongly believe that ethics starts with the individual. Many years ago, when you were a child, you listened to your parents and wanted to do things that would please your parents and that were the right things to do. The CFA Institute takes that one step further and says, think about what the client would want you to do. What would please the client, satisfy the client, and be in the best interests of the client. In my opinion, you can combine the two. If you both think about what would your mother say and think about what is in the best interests of the client, you're good to go. You'll be making good decisions that way. And, and to give you an example of why thinking about both is important, uh, suppose you're a broker and your client wants you to trade on inside information and make piles and piles of money. If you did that, you might make the client very happy, but you would not be making your mother proud, especially if you got hauled off to jail for insider trading. So again, very important to have strong personal, individual, ethical standards, as well as always keeping in the, in the forefront the idea of putting the client's best interests first. I also liked what, what Aristotle said many, many centuries ago. He said that if he wanted to learn about ethics and morals, he would look for someone who has lived a moral life rather than looking for someone who's been able to memorize moral arguments and has, has studied moral readings. So again, ultimately, it is a, a code of ethics is not just something that you read about and learn about and then take an exam and, and forget about ethics. Uh, an ethical code is something that you live, something that, that impacts all of your life. Now, what I'm going to be doing today is very specifically going over the Code of Ethics. And, and again, you don't need to memorize the Code of Ethics. You don't need to memorize the standards. What I'll be doing more is talking about what each standard is and then giving a scenario, talking about how you could be in a situation where you need to think about what the code would say or what the standard would say and then respond appropriately to that situation. First, let's look at the Code of Ethics and what the Code of Ethics says. Uh, the Code of Ethics says, first of all, that you should act ethically, with integrity, you should be competent, you should be respectful, you should act with diligence, and more importantly, that you should act this way to all people, not just to clients, but to employees, employers, the general public, that again, this is, this is a, a way of living, not simply a, a code that you memorize. And I might also add that, that for the CFA Code of Ethics, very specifically, the Institute says that it applies to covered people, and I, I want to define what a covered person is. A covered person is a candidate, a CFA charter holder or a CFA member. So again, this code of ethics very specifically applies to people who are covered under the code of ethics. So again, the, the first provision is a very key provision that you act ethically, that, that ethics is a part of your life overall. The second part of the code says that you need to encourage others. In other words, it's not enough to act ethically yourself. You need to encourage others to act ethically. Basically, what that's saying is, while tattling may not be acceptable, acceptable behavior on the playground, it is acceptable in the business world. You not only have to act ethically, but you have to make sure that others are acting ethically. The third point of the code says that you need to continually strive to improve both your own competence and the competence of others. So of course you're responsible for your own actions, but if you can improve the profession, improve other people, teach other people, that will help also. The next provision of the code says you need to exercise reasonable care and judgment. Don't rush to a decision. Make sure that you have all of the information that's needed to make an appropriate decision. 
The next provision of the code says that you always need to put the interests of the client and the profession before your own interests. So again, think about what will reflect well on the profession and think about what is in the best interests of the client. And the last provision of the code states that you need to promote capital market integrity. In other words, don't do a Martha Stewart. Uh, think of what the rules are for the capital markets and follow those rules. That's the code. Again, relatively simple, uh, six provisions. Uh, in my opinion, somewhat common sense provisions also, things that, that an ethical person would naturally do and want to do. Now, what I'm going to talk about next are the standards that the CFA has, Institute has set up. There are a number of standards with provisions in each standard. And what I'll be doing is first talking about the standard and then giving a little scenario to illustrate what that standard means. Now, the first standard says that what you need to do is have a knowledge of the law. It is your responsibility to know what the law says, not only to know what the government says, what the U.S. government says, but to know what regulatory agencies say, what licensing agencies say, what the professional associations associated with your profession say, and to follow those rules. This is a, a very key standard and in many respects a, a core of the whole idea of the ethics code and, and having standards. The, one of the ideas here is that the CFA Institute, the, the word CFA, that's a trademark. And the CFA Institute wants to protect that trademark. If you have a lot of financial scandals and you have a situation where the people being arrested and, and led off to prison are all CFA charter holders, that's going to damage that trademark. There will be less value to that trademark. People who are thinking of becoming uh, a CFA are going to say, oh, you know, look, look what those people did. That's terrible. That's going to devalue the trademark. The CFA Institute wants there to be value for the trademark. Uh, they would like a situation where uh, if there are scandals, the people involved in the scandals are not CFA members. That will make others say, uh, hey, you know, look, these people have a code of ethics. Uh, they're not in the same kind of trouble that all of these other people are in, and this is a good set of guidelines to live by. So again, first standard, knowledge of the law. Let me tell you the story about Monica Lewis. Monica lived in a lot of foreign countries when she was a child. She has all kinds of extensive contacts from her childhood and from her relatives. Now she's in the U.S. and she works for a big investment firm. She travels to New Iberia very frequently. This is where her brother lives. Uh, in fact, her future mother-in-law lives there also. And she's gotten a lot of good tips from her trips to New Iberia. And let me also add that the regulations in New Iberia are a little bit looser than they are in the United States. One of the requirements in New Iberia is that new businesses need to get licensed. Now, this is kind of a very thinly veiled kickback situation. Ostensibly, the licenses are there to make sure that businesses in New Iberia are operating properly. But again, it's just one more fee, one more way for the government to collect revenue. On one of her many business trips to New Iberia, and personal trip also, she got to visit her brother, she learns that a major U.S. corporation is about to be granted a license. This is information this is information that she's gotten before, information like this, and it has helped her do a really good job preparing reports for her firm back in the U.S. On her way back to the U.S. on the plane, she sits next to a man who happens to work for the company who just got a license at New Iberia. She congratulates him for getting the license and, and says it looks like he's got a lot of new business uh, contacts and leads coming up. And gets off the plane and, and continues her business. A little bit later, the guy that she met on the plane is talking with Monica's supervisor, Paul. And he says, hey, you really need to look into the contacts that, that Monica has. She knows information before other people do, and, and she may be acting on that information. OK, there's the situation. Now, has Monica 
violated Standard 1A. Again, Standard 1A is knowledge of the law. Well, first of all, she has acted perfectly okay as far as all the laws of New Iberia are concerned. 